Hi guys, so today I am doing a very casual chit chat type of video. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me some specific fragrance related questions. I, I'm a sucker for a good Q&A. Uh, I really like the more personal Q&As I always have and I always will. But a lot of the time when I ask uh, to do... Okay. This always happens when I'm trying to film a video. There we go. So yeah, today I thought that I would do a specific fragrance Q&A for you guys. I don't want to ramble too much. I want to try and answer as many questions as possible. I thought it would be a nice, fun, relaxing video because to be quite honest with you guys, I am feeling a little bit down about YouTube at the moment. Um, I don't really know how to explain it, but I haven't really been feeling like I'm very inspired to film. So I thought that this would be a nice way to get back into it. So let's go with the questions. I have quite a lot here. Well, there's a lot here. So I'm gonna try to answer them as quickly and as many as possible. I'm just reading off like this. So there, are, I'm not, Preparing. I never prepare anything that I say ever when I film. I just go with it. Um, okay. Ah, and I also quickly want to mention before getting into the QA, I know that uh, I've already mentioned it before many times, but Minuya Demir has relaunched. You can now buy it on fragrancesubois.com. The shipping is like in one to two days. It's crazy. Uh, you guys know how much I love my own fragrance. It's my favorite gourmand in the entire world. I'm so proud of it, so happy with it. And you can buy it right now. It's a unisex gourmand for men and women. And yeah, just wanted to give that one a quick mention before we get into it because it's finally back in stock after being out of stock for a few months. So let's see. Um, ah, pasties, no. I have my dog here with me actually. You guys haven't seen pasties yet, I don't think, but this is my dog. His name is pasties and yeah, that pretty much explains our relationship right now. Actually, I really want to ask for some advice. I've had him since about, ow, uh, like two, three months, coming up on three months now. And he is really, 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 really a troubled dog. Like he is really naughty. And I never had this experience with my dog in Perth, which I have a Pomeranian in Perth. She's the light of my life. She's my companion. She's my child. I don't have the same connection with Pasties. Uh, I know that's not maybe the nicest thing to say. I love him. I take really good care of him, making sure he has the best food. I'm walking him. I'm giving him lots of attention. But I just don't feel that same bond with Pasties. And as you can see, he is naughty. He is constantly biting us. He is constantly ripping apart my shoes. Uh, he has a shoe fetish. He's always, whenever I bring him in the perfume room, he's trying to smash all of the bottles. He's just a really like naughty, uh, misbehaving dog. And I want some advice on how to train him. We're trying to use the crate as much as possible. Sorry if this is boring for some of you, but we're trying to use the crate as much as possible, which he loves the crate. He goes in there sometimes by himself and we use that kind of for him to settle down and also sleep at night. And he's no problem in his crate. But when he's out of his crate, he cannot just be normal. You know, we have so many toys. I have, I bought him some turkey necks from a uh, special raw dog food place in Dubai that I got all of his food from. I got him, some, yeah, some turkey necks that he loves and it's like a bone or he loves chewing it. But I just cannot get him, I just cannot train this dog. Like he's really doesn't understand. And uh, I'm really struggling with him actually. He's really, really naughty. Like, he's just, he's a naughty dog. Anyways, aren't you pussies? Miss your pussies. Okay, that's it for the dog talk. Now he's gonna probably be super naughty sitting next to me, but whatever. Is Fragrance One Men Fragrances by Jeremy Fragrance worth to buy? How about its performance? Honestly, I have all of Jeremy's fragrances and actually, I did a review on them a long time ago and I stick by what I said as in uh, okay it's a little bit controversial for me to say now because my fragrance Minuit de Me is very expensive I'm aware of that I'm completely aware of that but you have to keep in mind and a lot of people uh, don't know like I don't know a lot of people just like to say things but Fragrance de Bois it is 
in the price range of 180 pound to like 400 pound like i think sahara oud is like 300 400 pounds for a bottle so you have to keep in mind this whereas jeremy's fragrances i don't know how much he spent when he created them he could have spent the most money uh whatever but they are very expensive for what they are as in their packaging their box and the juice is good i will say that it's very mass appealing commercial and some of them are nice i really like the night for women and the office for men those are the ones that i i would recommend from his line to be honest i'm not a big fan of the uh date for men and also the day for women it smells too similar to the night and i prefer the night but i might do an entire review on jeremy's fragrances i have a lot of respect for him he's a nice guy um and yeah i have i have respect for this guy so no no beef no nothing just being honest oh this is a good question i've always wanted to answer this top five favorite notes in perfume i was thinking of even doing a video on my favorite and least favorite notes but i think i would just include it in this video so one note for me, I think it's one of my top, top favorite notes is sandalwood. Now, sandalwood for me, it is just such a sensual, beautiful, creamy, depends on which type of sandalwood it is and where it comes from. I just adore the smell of sandalwood. It kind of smells creamy, smooth. Sometimes it can be sweet. Um, it has almost like a dusty feeling to it a bit. I just adore the note of sandalwood. I find in my favorite creations, almost all the time there is sandalwood, either in the very, very, very uh, prominent notes, sandalwood is in there, or even if it's underneath. I just love sandalwood in my perfumes. So yeah, another note that I have a love-hate relationship with, and you guys know this already, is patchouli. Now, patchouli is something that I've only recently come to love. My least favorite perfume in the world used to be Mugler, uh, a Angel, sorry. And now it is like, a fragrance that I smell it and I'm like wow like wow this is just incredible and patchouli yeah I had like a hate relationship with it at the beginning and now I really love it sometimes I really dislike patchouli there is a fragrance by Jovois which I really like this house I like the company Jovois Paris but their fragrance psychedelic oh he's really 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 annoying me right now uh, the fragrance Psychedelic by Jovois, the patchouli fragrance Psychedelic, it is just too dirty and vintage and heavy for me. I much prefer my patchouli like this in the Carolina Herrera Private Collection Nightfall Patchouli. It's a spicy, cinnamony patchouli. What's up? It's a spicy, sweet, uh, warm... I just, I just love my patchouli like this. Same with like a tuxedo. I love patchouli, but not when it smells dirty and vintage. So, oh. stop. No, 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 passes no. So patchouli, I love patchouli a lot. I also love vanilla. I obviously guys, I think anyone that loves perfume at least, oh God, I think I'll have to put him in this cage. Most people that like perfumes likes vanilla. At least you like vanilla. For me, it's just always been one of my top, top, top favorite notes in perfume and I just love it so, so, so much. I also love a lot of balsamic resinous type of notes like myrrh, uh, benzoin, which is kind of vanillic in a way. It's like a warm, powdery, resinous, vanillic type of scent. I also love tonka bean, obviously. Uh, I love pink pepper. I love the note of pink pepper. I think it's just beautiful. There are so many notes, guys. I'm just looking. I love coffee, tobacco. I love tobacco. I think it's in some of my favorite perfumes ever. Personally, I just love tobacco. Uh, and I love boozy scents as well. Like I love a good rum tobacco fragrance so much. So I think those are some of my favorite notes. Least favorite notes, if you watch me, you would know this. I really dislike leather. I'm not a big fan of aldehydes. Depends on the scent and depends on how the composition is. If it's very, 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 very aldehydic, then I'm not gonna be a fan of it. But if the aldehydes are more uh, subdued, then I will like the scent. There is some other notes that I really dislike, but um, I can't really think of them right now. So let's move on. Hi Demi, what perfume would you wear on your wedding day? I'm having a hard time deciding. Oh my God, I have, I cannot even imagine the struggle of picking a fragrance for your wedding day. And I have 
a lot of sympathy if you're watching this video and you're getting married and you have to choose a fragrance because for me I think this would be the hardest thing for me to decide on I may even make my own fragrance no I wouldn't make my own fragrance on my wedding day no I just I just have no idea I would probably want to smell something like Rouge Malachite because it's a very special fragrance to me um, I would probably want to wear something very feminine and a little bit floral but creamy and I don't know like I just I have uh, no idea what I would wear on my wedding day and I have yeah a lot of sympathy if you're having this struggle right now of choosing honestly I think that Rouge Maliki could be a beautiful one to wear I would definitely wear something feminine I wouldn't wear something like oriental or spicy I would wear something very floral and feminine how to make fragrance last longer now I get this question a lot and honestly my best advice would be to use oils I know that um, maybe in like the US and places like this, more like Western developed countries, I guess that oils are not as, um, as much a part of the culture. Like in Dubai, obviously it's a big part of the culture to have bahor, uh, oils, atars, all of that thing. But for me, I really, really notice a difference when I lay out my perfume with some sort of oil. And honestly, just put on, find an oil that you like, either it being a clean musky oil or a rose, whatever it is. Try to find a good brand that has nice oils. Zerzhov have some really, really nice ones, but they're very, very animalic and very, very expensive. So if you like animalic, go for it. If you don't, then don't. But I would definitely say an oil, then your perfume. Uh, that really made a difference for me personally. Me, I like to go with an oil, then I layer like two to three perfumes. I know it's kind of crazy, but I always get uh, good reactions whenever I do this, so yeah. I want to gift my father a classy perfume. Uh, would you recommend five? Okay, so for me, if I was recommending my dad, which he's no longer here, I wish I could gift him a perfume, but I would say Ted Hermes from Hermes. I know it's an old one, I know it's classic, I know it's been around for a very, very long time, but I just adore this scent so much. I love it. I think it's so timeless. It doesn't smell old, it doesn't smell outdated, it's just beautiful. I would also maybe say something like Amouage, I'm trying to look over there right now, Epic Man. It's a very classy fragrance. It's very, very, very particular though. So don't just go ahead and give this one, it's expensive. I wouldn't recommend you just going and buying it, but it's a very mature, sophisticated type of guy. What else would I recommend? Another one that I love is Parfum de Mali, Dali. Now this is like that Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal type of fragrance. Very fresh though, like a more fresher version of that. And I really, really love it a lot. There are some great ones from Chanel that I love. Uh, Sycamore being one of them. I love Sycamore. I love it for a more sophisticated, mature man. Uh, and there are plenty, but honestly, I would say if I was gifting one right now, it would probably be Hermes, Ted Hermes, because I just, I just love it so much. My number one favorite. Well, obviously, I'm going to say Minuit Demi because it is my number one favorite, but I obviously have other ones that I love. Obviously, Minuit Demi, but I'm also loving Jazz Club, wearing this one a lot right now from Mason Margiela. Um, what else? I've already mentioned Nightfall Patchouli. Intoxicated by Killian. I'm wearing a lot of these fragrances right now. So they're kind of all my faves. What Zerzhov perfume do you recommend for a girl who likes Alien and Coco Mademoiselle? Um, I would personally say uh, Asento Overdose, but I know a very popular one from the brand is La Capitale. Now I'm not, I, this fragrance didn't blow me away for some reason, although it's good, so definitely check it out. And also Herba Pura. Again, me, it didn't blow me away, but I know it's a good one. Also, uh, trying to think, what is it called? Grand Ballot. And there is one more that I wanted to say. L. There we go. L. Those are all the four that I would recommend. Best fragrance to pair with Baccarat Rouge 540. I'm actually going to do a layering video after this one. Now, guys, this is my advice for Baccarat Rouge 540. Nowadays, this has become so, 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 so popular. Francis Kirkshan with, uh, this is the X-Trait right here, but in general, the Baccarat Rouge 540 DNA, it is a masterpiece and what Francis Kirkshan created was something that, I don't know, I just have a lot of respect for him. I'm, I'm dying to meet Francis Kirkshan, but what he created with Baccarat, it is just this mass appealing niche 
sexy, unisex, powerful scent that just blew the world away and it blew everyone by storm. Uh, with that being said, Baccarat Rouge 540 is no longer a very unique fragrance at least where I live. Maybe if you live in a small town like, uh, I mean, where I live in Perth, for instance, I live in, I used to live in Australia, uh, in Western Australia, in Perth. It's the biggest city in WA, but in general, it's a very small city and there is not a very big population there. So if you're wearing Baccarat Rouge there, maybe you're still going to get noticed. Whereas in Dubai, I smell Baccarat Rouge 540 every time I leave the house. Now, if you own this fragrance and you also live in a big city like New York or Miami or LA or Paris or wherever you live, but you still want to wear Baccarat Rouge 540, but you still want to smell unique. My advice is to mix it with any perfume that you have in your collection. Now, the reason is because in my opinion, this is just my opinion, you can take it with a grain of salt, whatever you want to do. The base of Baccarat Rouge, like this DNA, it can pretty much be mixed with any fragrance in your collection and it's going to work. For me, Baccarat can be mixed with Tuxedo. It can be mixed with Nightfall Patchouli. It can be mixed with Minuit Demi, which I do all the time. It can be mixed with Rouge Malachite, which smells absolutely insane. It can literally be mixed with anything because it's a sweet woody base. So the it's not something so complex. It's not a spicy fragrance. It's not a floral fragrance. It's not an aldehydic fragrance. It is literally a sweet woody scent. So you can mix it with anything in your collection. You can mix it with Oud for Greatness, with Herod, with Baccarat, with this, with that. You can mix it with anything and it's going to work. So that is my advice with Baccarat Rouge. Try to mix it with something. Just give a few spritz of your other perfume and a few spritz of Baccarat. Done. Finished. And it smells amazing, very unique, and it will get you compliments because this DNA will get you compliments, especially if you mix it with something else to make it more unique and stand out. Ah, cool. Do you ever try Santal Blush from Tom Ford? Yes, I adore Santal Blush. It's probably one of my top, top, top Tom Ford fragrances. Although I don't own it, it's one of my favorite. If I remember right, I just adored this scent. I think it was hands down the best from the private blends. It's a creamy, dusty, uh, woody, it was just amazing. I just loved it so much, Santal Blush. It's gorgeous. Your favorite gym fragrances, please. Honestly, I wear Molecule 01 by Eccentric Molecules, mixed with something like Pacific Rock Moss from Goldfield and Banks, uh, or like, <clears throat> sorry, or like a musky fresh scent. So me, I love wearing Molecule 01 and kind of layering it with just something fresh or citrus or musky and done. And I always get complimented at the gym actually when I, um, wear my perfume. What do you think of Kaylee's new launch, the Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper? It is great. It is a great, great, great scent. I think this, I have it over there, but I can't be bothered to get off right now. The Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper, in my opinion, is going to become Mona's bestseller for sure, because it's so, it's, it's just, it's, it's a complete perfume. It's sweet. It kind of reminds me of Montal Intense Cafe, and it also kind of reminds me of, I'm not sure if you guys ha have ever experienced this, but when I was younger, I used to eat these little pink musky lollies, and I forgot what they were called, but they were pink and musky, and I used to eat them all the time, and that's what the fragrance reminds me of. In the opening, it smells like this, and the dry down, it smells more like Intense Cafe from Montal. Do you like Helfetti by Penhaligons? Yes, I love it. It's a great, um, nutsy, woodsy, earthy, patchouli, very um, refined type of scent. Very, very refined, very elegant. I feel like if you like Jubilation from Amouage or even Santal 33 by Le Labo, I feel like it's in between those scents. You would love Halfetti, it's a great one. But it's very masculine for me, I never wear it. When do we find out about your new perfume beers? I'm dying to know. It's coming, it's working, it's being worked on. It's just such a, I've already mentioned it and I hate when people say, Ah oh yes, I'm working on this secret project, <laughs> but it's really something we're not allowed to talk about it yet. Like, it's just something from Pierre and myself. We do not want to launch it until it's 100% ready and perfect because it's a sort of product that you cannot launch not 100% perfect. So, and it's not a perfume brand. I'm, I don't want to launch a perfume brand, never. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's so annoying to just give little hints and stuff, but 
it's coming guys. I'm working every day on it, same with Pierre. It's just a lot of work. I'm actually at the moment, we're looking for some employees. Um, we have one girl in the US right now. Hey, if you're watching, I don't want to say your name just in case people uh, come and message you. But yeah, we have one girl working with us from the US and at the moment we're kind of looking for a few more employees for different jobs. Are you working on any flankers to your perfume Minuit de Me? No, it's just going to be Minuit de Me right now. And um, I, I love it too much. I don't want to do flankers and this and that and the other. It's just Minuit de Me. And then in the future, maybe another collaboration with a different brand. Do you still like Tom Ford fragrances? Yes, 100%. I love Tom Ford fragrances. There are so many that I love from the line. I love the house of Tom Ford, but the only thing is that I have my collection in Australia and I really don't want to buy them while I'm here. I'm, I just want to bring my collection from Australia here because what's the point of buying the same fragrances twice? I, I would be a little bit stupid. So I, I do love my Tom Fords. I love Santal Blush, Noir de Noir, Black Orchid. I really miss Black Orchid. Uh, Noir Extreme, Noir Parfum. I have so many back at home that I really miss. Tobacco Vini as well. Um, I will just wait till I go home and then I'll bring them back. What do you think about Baldafrig from Byredo? I love Baldafrig. It is one of the only Byredo perfumes that I really love. I don't see the hype with Mojave Ghost, Gypsy Water. I don't see the hype with them fragrances. That's just my opinion. Again, I'm allowed to have my own opinion, but Baldafrique, it's great. I love this fragrance. I think it's very unique and I really think it's a good one, even though the house is not my favorite. First fragrance you ever wore. It was, I already talked about this story 50 billion times on my channel, but it was Flower by Kenzo. It was my mom's perfume um, and I wore it to school in year four and got told off for wearing perfume, but that was my first perfume. And then I think the first perfume that I owned was maybe Dolce & Gabbana Light. Oh no, that's not true. I owned a lot, and I'm saying a lot of Victoria's Secret. I owned Fabulous, Oh So Sexy, Bombshell, um, Tease, I loved Tease. And then after I smelled Tease, I realized that it's the same as a Juicy Couture fragrance. But I loved my Victoria's Secret sprays, body splashes, perfumes, everything. And then I started to go into more like the designer affordable world. So I had Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, I had Juicy Couture, I had uh, Armani Code. I had some fragrances like this that I just loved. And um, yeah, I actually have a photo of my first perfume collection. I might post it on Instagram. Most complimented women's fragrances you've worn. Um, I might do an updated video on most complimented, but I remember one of my most complimented perfumes in my entire life. There is there is a few, like Delina, for instance, that was a huge compliment, a compliment getter for me. But I would say probably the most was maybe Alien from Mugler. I'm not sure why, but I just remember wearing it on nights out and uh, whenever. And I have never been complimented so much than when I was wearing Alien. And I freaking miss that baby in my collection so bad. I want it, I want to wear it, I miss it. I adore the smell of Alien. And yeah, it was definitely my most complimented perfume I've ever worn in my life, I think. Actually saying that, I think that this is also my most complimented, which is Passessoir from BDK. I'm very proud. I've never finished a bottle since like one to two years ago. And I finished, I'm about to finish Passessoir. So I'm very happy. I'm very excited. By the fireplace or jazz club? For me, hands down, jazz club. For me, hands down. By the fireplace is good. It is good, I own it. But jazz club is way, way, way sexier and superior to, jazz, uh, to by the fireplace in my eyes. In my eyes, jazz club, it's just addictive, sexy. I just, it's intoxicating this fragrance and I love it so much for men and women. I'm a woman, I wear it, Pierre's a man, he wears it, and I just find it intoxicating. Love to wear that one. What is your favorite men's fragrance? Honestly, guys, I would still say my favorite is this baby right here, Tuxedo. But saying that, I still have other favorites. Tuxedo, I just think it is so... Oh, wow. Like, every time I smell it, it drives me insane. I also adore, adore Killian Intoxicated. I love uh, Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb, the original. I think this is like, whoa. 
it's just amazing Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb. I also really love, obviously, Herod and, uh, Herod and Leighton from Mali. I love Amouage Enclave. I'm loving that one at the moment. And there's a few others, but maybe I will do an updated men's favorites video. How do you store your fragrances? How to best protect them? Now, for me personally, I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite right now because I don't do this. I have a window right here and I have my fragrances in front of me, but saying that I always keep the curtain down because it is really, really bad for your fragrances to be in the direct sunlight. I'm telling you right now, it's happened to me uh, years ago when I first had my first perfume collection, I used to have my perfumes under the window and I always used to have the light coming in the sun and my perfumes, some of them went bad. So don't do that. But I would say the best place, if you can, is to keep them in like a wardrobe cupboard, um, if you know what I mean, and keep them stored in a dark, cool environment. If you do have your fragrances in the direct sunlight, they will go bad. They, one, the juice might change color. Two, the scent will actually turn bad. And uh, yeah, so in my advice, put them in a dark, cool environment and your fragrances will last forever. How do you feel about Rouge Malachite being discontinued? Now, guys, I sent a message to the perfumer of Rouge Malachite because he was actually maybe going to be the perfumer uh, behind my perfume collaboration, Pascal Gorin. And I sent a message to him asking if this was true. And he said it wasn't. So I'm not sure if that's a rumor or if it actually has been discontinued because if it has been discontinued, I am going to Dubai Mall right now and buying 10 bottles of this. I cannot be without this fragrance. If I find out that it's gone and I cannot get a bottle, I will be devastated. Devastated if I cannot buy this fragrance again. So I'm gonna find out for sure, uh, but I'm hearing this all the time that Rouge Maliki has been discontinued and I don't understand why because it's, literally it's the best from this um, Armani Privé collection. Also, Rose Darby is beautiful, but Rouge Malachite, it's amazing. Uh, the perfume that you miss the most from back home. Good question. There is a lot. Like, I have all of my Guerlain's back home. I have Angelique Noir, Spiritus du Bleveni, uh, uh, which one? Tonka Imperial, but I have it here. I have Gourmand Coquine, which has been discontinued. Gourmand Coquine is gone, and I'm very sad about it, but I have my bottle back home. I have so many that I miss, but I would say the number one perfume that I miss from back home is Gris Dior. <gasps> Guys, I literally could get emotional thinking about how much I love and miss this fragrance in my collection. Gris Dior, wow. Like, there was, for me and Gris Dior, it was a slow burn. For me and this fragrance, it was a slow burn. I didn't smell it one day and go, whoa, this is the best perfume in the entire world. It's going to be my signature scent, which happens to me a lot with perfumes. For me and Greedy Ore, it was a very, very slow burn, but man, it became my everything. I was wearing Greedy Ore every single day. I almost ran out of it. I think I have like this much left back home. For some reason, I don't want to buy a bottle here. I don't know why, but I think I will because I really, truly miss uh greedy or it was my signature i think it would be my signature scent now i don't know i need some recommendations right now from you guys and girls right now i am missing something in my collection i am missing a fresh everyday scent that can also be like a signature type of scent for me that was greedy or it was fresh invigorating juicy but it also had enough uh like enough body to be a signature all year round type of scent right now i feel like i don't have anything like that in my collection i feel like passessoir is what i'm wearing the most like i'm wearing it every day i'm wearing it to go out i'm wearing it to go whatever i'm wearing it a lot but i'm still missing that very fresh but signature scent worthy scent if that makes sense. So if you guys can recommend me some, that would be amazing. What are your favorite citrus fragrances? Again, very tough question because I'm I'm not a big citrus fragrance wearer. It only comes to me very occasionally. For men, I love Elysium by Roja. I know it's not technically, well, it is a citrus scent, so I love this one. 
I love Pacific Rock Moss by Goldfield and Banks. I really love this one. Nishane Wulong Cha. I'm wearing this one a lot right now and I love it. I also love Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. I love Sedle by Parfum de Mali. Incredible citrus scent. Neo by Zerjoff is incredible. I love some Tom Ford. I love Mandarino di Amalfi. That one is, wow, amazing, but it doesn't have longevity at all. There are a lot of citrus scents that I love, but I would probably say those are the ones that I know the best. Yeah. Favorite Montau fragrances and more videos with you and Pierre. I love those videos. Thank you so much. I would say my favorite Montals. I have quite a few. I love Oud Tobacco, Honey Oud. Um, obviously Intense Cafe, uh, Intense Cafe Ristretto, but those are more common now. A lot of people wear them. There's uh, quite a few from Montal that I like. There's one called like Arabian Tonka, I think it's called, and I love that fragrance. I want to have it really bad. There is, a, there is a few more, but I forgot the names of them that I like from Montal. Montal is a good brand. I really, really like it because the price point is attractive, yet the juice is good. Like it doesn't smell super luxurious and and really refined but they last they smell fantastic and they don't smell super cheap or anything like that so it's a good house oh okay this one is a super hard one what is your all-time favorite amber fragrance now i have to be honest i think my all-time favorite amber is one that i don't even have with me and i don't even own and it is grand soir from maison francis kirkshon grand soir is just wow it is just mind-blowing mind-blowing how good that fragrance is but uh i would say it is incredible for me personally i feel like amber it goes in two different ways it can be very sweet warm resinous and very cocooning i also love the other one that i love that could be comparable to grand soir in the same world is uh ombre sultan from serge Bretons. that is an outstanding amber fragrance. Outstanding. And for me, Grand Soir and Ombre Sultan, they kind of have a, they're in the same world. Ombre Sultan is much more vintage though, whereas Grand Soir is just very sweet, warm, resinous, cocooning, balsamic, uh, a little powdery, woody. I'm just thinking about it right now. But saying that, I also love amber in the opposite direction of the spicy, um, spicy a little fresh kind of ambery scent and my favorite would definitely be ombre nui from christian dior gorgeous elegant amber fragrance that i just think is a 10 out of 10 but i feel like amber fragrances they're becoming a little less popular now and i don't know why like i'm trying to think and i'm looking at my collection of what other ambers i have and i don't have very many at all but i would say to be honest, my favorite, Grand Soir, Ombre Sultan, and Ombre Nui from Christian Dior. At the moment, those are my top favorites. Will you ever make a men's fragrance? Yes, I will make a men's fragrance in collaboration with a brand one day, but not for a while. I obviously have Min Nui Demi, which is my baby, and I'm working on my business, so that's really keeping my hands full, but it's definitely something I would love to do for the future is to make a men's fragrance. And I would also love to make a women's fragrance as well. Side effect or mousse grabageur? Ah, <gasps> guys, like what are you doing to me with these questions? <gasps> Whoa, that's a really tough one, but I have to say, I love side effect. I love it, but mousse grabageur is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece and i want to own it so badly must grab a joy it was actually created by the same lab that made minuit de me so simrise they have maurice rousseau uh i really 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 want to meet him maybe i'll meet him in paris but uh maurice rousseau he made must grab a joy and guys like it's a masterpiece fragrance really it's a masterpiece and i have to say must grab a joy over side effect at what spray of perfume cologne is too much? Guys, I watch a girl on uh, YouTube and I really love her videos and I love her personality. And she is the only fragrance reviewer that I actually watch. Uh, and that's not trying to be anything. I don't really watch a lot of YouTube nowadays. And if I do, uh, it's mostly of cooking, to be honest with you guys. I'm mostly watching cooking videos at the moment. And uh, yeah, that's it. But there is one girl in the fragrance community that I just, I die when I watch her video. She makes me laugh so much. And 
I adore her personality. I love that she's doing her own thing. She's not copying anyone. She's not trying to follow in the, in the vibe of anyone. She's just doing her own thing. She's unapologetically herself. She makes me cry whenever I watch her videos because she's so funny. And I love how free and open and honest she is. It's just refreshing and I just love it. Uh, it's Curly Fragrance. Curly Fragrance, so Michelle. And yeah, I highly recommend that you guys go and watch her because she's really, really funny. Like you will watch her video and you won't get bored. You won't get bored just sitting there watching her video for 45 minutes. You can watch her. She's really interesting. She's really funny. That was a massive tangent. But basically why I thought about Michelle was because she oversprays her fragrances. Guys, me too. I, maybe it's because she also loves Dubai. She's been here a lot and I'm now living here. And I hope I can meet her actually very soon when she comes to Dubai. But anyways... Don't be scared to spray your fragrance a lot. Don't be scared. Don't spray your fragrance like ch 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 like uh, it's not. You're not going to kill anyone by spraying too much perfume. You're not. I personally recommend that you spray your perfume a lot and project and smell good and especially now with everyone wearing masks, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to smell like uh, a lot, you know? Go ahead, spray it. If you're wearing Bleau de Chanel, Roger Elysium, Amouage Reflection, spray yourself head to toe, nobody's gonna die, no problem. Favorite fragrance to bois aside from yours, of course. Uh, for me, definitely Ujun. Ah, the cap is falling off. Ujun, I got this a very, very, very long time ago. My bottle is a bit chipped and looking a bit rough, but I've traveled with it, it's been to Bali with me. You can see I've worn it quite a lot. Uh, and also Santal Complet. Those are my two favorites from Fragrance Subois. I just love them so much. And yeah. But obviously, Min Min Me is my favorite. Pick two fragrances for life. <gasps> you cannot do that to me, but I'm going to have to go and say these. Or uh, Greedy Dior from Christian Dior. No, no, no. I have to have Rouge Malakite. I'm sorry. Have to. What's some fragrances that you think are overhyped in the fragrance community? <sighs> Versace Dylan Blue. It's very overhyped and I don't see the love for it. I prefer the original, like the Aqua Di Gio Profumo, which can be comparable to it. I prefer Versace Pour Homme. It's much better. Another overhyped one I would say is Ombre Leather by Tom Ford. I think it's overhyped. I'm not, I don't see the big fuss about it, to be honest with you. Honestly, guys, Encre Noir by Lalique. I don't really see the love for this fragrance at all. And I know it's very, very popular, very, very loved, but I don't really see the hype of that one. And also Santal 33 by La Labo. Same with like uh, Byredo, Mojave Ghost, Gypsy Water. I don't get the hype of those fragrances whatsoever. They're nice, but... I don't see the hype. Also, you guys know how much I dislike Diptyque Philosophos, but I understand the quality of the perfume is great of Diptyque. Uh, I like Diptyque's concept. It's like a Parisian brand from Saint-Germain. I love the concept of it, but it just, like Philosophos for me, it's not my vibe. I don't like it. And it's a very, very hyped perfume. Oh, and I also never understood the hype with Gucci Bloom. I never understood this hype, never understood this love. It was a very simple white floral scent and everyone was going crazy for it. But I think more so for the packaging because the packaging of that perfume is beautiful. Simple, sophisticated, yeah. But those are what I think are overhyped. Which designer is your favorite everyday wear for a guy? Good question. I love I love the original Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf, like I already mentioned. For me, it's suitable for everyday. If you want to smell sexy, a little spicy, a little fresh, I love Spice Bomb, the original, for everyday use. Chanel Bleu de Chanel, I know it's basic, but it is really a great scent, much better than Dior Sauvage. I also love Prada L'Homme. Miss that fragrance so much. It's an amazing scent. Uh, what else do I love? Ted Hermes, I already mentioned. Um, L'Homme from Yves Saint Laurent. Even though it doesn't have great longevity, it smells really, really good. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are a few that I really like from the designer world. A signature scent for a woman in her 40s. Honestly, I know I mentioned it as my signature scent, but Greedy Dior from Christian Dior is just so elegant and so beautiful. Beautiful. Or I would say Hermes, um, Kelly Kalesh is a gorgeous one. Or Twilly from Hermes as well. Those are really beautiful as signature scent perfumes. Um... Yeah, I would say them. But for me, Greedy Dior from Christian Dior or even Bottega Veneta, the just Bottega Veneta for her. 
I need to get this fragrance as well. It's a beautiful, it's kind of similar to Greedy Ore, but it has a little bit more of that ship feeling to it. And yeah, it's gorgeous. But me, my recommendation would be Greedy Ore. Are there any hidden struggles that you experience behind the scene of the fragrance world? Of course. Um, I don't know, guys. There is so much that you guys don't know about me as a person, and I'm not sure that I will ever share. And... Um, yeah, I just, for me personally, I used to feel so, I used to feel like I wanted to share everything online and I wanted to share everything with the people that followed me. And it just got to a point where it became like dangerous and it became dangerous to my mental health and to everything. I'm not trying to say, um, claim uh, mental health, mental health, because I really dislike when people play on the fact that they've had mental illness to kind of like victimize themselves. I don't believe in this victimizing mentality at all, but there was a point where I was so excited to share about my life, share about my journey, share about this, how I got to here, how I did this, because it really was a story of coming from here to here. I'm not saying I'm at the top. I'm not saying I'm rich. I'm not saying I'm anything super successful, whatever, but my life has been crazy in the past three, four years. And I would have loved to have shared it. And I, there was a point where I was sharing a lot about my life. And now I have no desire whatsoever to share about my life. I have no desire just because people online, they can be, I don't even want to talk about it, you know, like I don't even want to talk about it or go into it. But of course there are struggles. There are struggles with what I'm doing. There are struggles with me as a human being and a person that I go through every single day that you guys don't know about. And I won't share it because that's just opening myself up for a lot of stuff. So I'm sorry if that seems really like closed off and kind of closed minded and rude, but it's just at some point I have to protect myself and my own privacy. So yeah, but don't think that my life is amazing. My life is great. I sit here, I film like, no, I've worked extremely, extremely hard and I'm still working really, really hard and it has been a really hard journey for me that you guys don't really know. <laughs> okay guys, I'm sorry, but I've been filming for one hour, so I have to wrap it up. But let me know guys, if you want a part two to this fragrance Q and A, because I would be more than happy to film a part two. I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, watching this little Q and A about fragrance with me. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.